Growing in Christ, 40 Days into Deeper Faith, Arnie Cole and Michael Ross. Day 5. John the Baptist prepares the way. I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stands one you don't know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. John chapter 1 verses 26-27 A number of Jews of Jerusalem, the priests, the Levites, don't know what to make of John the Baptist. He lives in the Judean desert, wears rustic camel's hair clothes with a leather belt around his waist, and uh, survives on a diet of locusts and wild honey much like a description of Elijah. But in spite of this scary appearance, John can preach, and he is drawing big crowds. People gather around him out of spiritual hunger, and their fascination with this eccentric personality and commanding voice, and some are starting to whisper among themselves, is this the Christ? The Savior of Israel had been promised by God for thousands of years, and John even spoke the word of the prophet Isaiah, describing himself as a voice of the calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. John is so unusual, the religious leaders know that they have to investigate. I am not the Christ, John tells them. Next, they ask if he is Elijah, the Old Testament prophet who was whisked up to heaven hundreds of years ago, a man some believed would come back to announce the Christ. I am not, John replies. In desperation, they ask for an answer they can take back to their superiors. That's when John quoted Isaiah, essentially telling them, it is my job to tell you that to straighten out your lives because God is on his way. Now he is starting to upset the investigators. After all, they came to grill him, not to be preached at. So they demand to know, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John gives them an answer that they never saw coming. He says that standing right there among them is somebody they don't know, somebody they don't know, somebody whose sandals he's not even fit to untie. In this culture, untying sandals is considered such a lower level job that only slaves are supposed to do it. So John makes it clear that he is not preaching out of the puffed up ego or delusion of grandeur. Instead, he is here to prepare everyone for somebody else, somebody he is not even too fit to be slave to. Suddenly, John has everyone's attention. The voice of one calling in the desert is so strong, so persistent, that it's heard even in the king's palace. Let's explore together the word from John chapter 1, verses 19 to 28. There was something about John the Baptist that people took seriously. Wherever he went, people stopped and listened. He seemed to strike a universal chord, one that still rings true today. His words in the book of John pierce heart with a deep-rooted sense that humanity has failed, that every one of us must find a way to be cleansed of our sins. The answer is Jesus Christ. Ordinary folk gravitated to this message, which was simple and practical and filled with hope. The citizens of Israel knew that there was no realistic way for them to ever measure up to the rules of the Pharisees. But when they were baptized in the Jordan River, it was a specific act at the specific time. They knew they were preparing their souls for the arrival of the Messiah. Biblical scholar Craig G. Bartholomew, Ph.D., sheds light on some key elements of John's mission 
as the front runner of the Lord. John's message is that God's subject must repent, turn from sin to God, seeking his promises, salvation, and be baptized in water. Where this happens is important since the Jewish geography is drenched with symbolic meaning. John baptizes in the Jordan River because it was here that more than a thousand years earlier, Israel entered the promised land to become God's light to the nations. John's return to this place signals a new beginning for Israel, a new summons from God to carry out that original task. Baptism is a vivid symbol of this new beginning, suggesting cleansing from sin. The people of God are symbolically crossing the Jordan once more, entering into the land, cleansed and ready to take up their task again. Repent and make way for the Lord. Are you listening to the voice of one calling in the desert? The late English journalist, author, and media personality Malcolm Muggeridge once said this about Jesus, God reaches down to relate himself to a man, and man reaches up to relate himself to God. Time looks into eternity, and eternity into time, making now always, and always now. Everything is transformed by this sublime drama of the Incarnation. God's special parable for fallen men in a fallen world. By living with, by, and in Him, we can be reborn to become new men and women in the new world. Let's think about it. What does it mean to make straight the way for the Lord? How does this command apply to your life? Let the truth set you free. As it's written in John chapter 8, 31, 32, to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In this deceptively simple verse, Jesus tells us that if we follow his teachings, we will learn his truth and be liberated. Sounds great doesn't it? The problem, though, is that sometimes it looks as if we are following Jesus' teaching pretty well on the outside, but on the inside we haven't handed over our whole heart. Are you ready to hand over everything, your whole heart, to Jesus? Why or why not? Share what you need to Jesus to cleanse from your life. Now let's pray together. Lord, help us understand the wondrous and infinite gift you have given us through the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask you to nudge our hearts and to help us to be sensitive to sin, not comfortable with it. I encourage everyone to sit and have to some time repenting of everyone's sin. God is good and He is merciful to forgive every sin. And now it's time for me to say bye. Thank you for joining me in this podcast and prayer. We bless you. In Jesus' name, Amen.